Hi everybody, welcome to Dr. Manny's YouTube Learn Shops. In this session, we review some of the common skin lesions or disorders that you might encounter in your practice as a nurse or just in your daily interactions with people. The objectives for this session are just to revisit normal skin characteristics in a different way, list the general features for assessment of skin, appreciate the importance of identifying skin anomalies, and comprehend certain terminology that is related to skin lesions. So consider what's normal. Normal is essentially a term that's used to refer to healthy skin. The scientific term is eudermic. U, EU is normal for everything. Normal skin has got fine pores, a good blood circulation. It's soft and velvety, depending on how old you are. And it has got a smooth texture and it doesn't have any blemishes or scars typically. Normal skin. Dry skin is also referred to as xerosis. And dry is just a concept or a term that's used to describe skin that produces less sebum than normal. It's caused by a lack of natural moisturizing factors, which include urea. Urea is just not a waste product. It's an essential factor in your body. Amino acids and lactic acid. And these help to bind water, which again is what keeps your skin moist, not dry. Epidermal lipids such as ceramides, fatty acids and cholesterol are also needed for healthy skin as a barrier in order for it to function effectively. Not much you can do about getting older. As we get older, we do produce less sebum and as a consequence of that, we may develop wrinkles and xerosis. Then you've got oily skin. Oily skin is also referred to as seboria. Oily is a skin type which increased sebum is produced. It's an overproduction of sebum which could be related to genetics, biological factors, hormonal changes and imbalances, certain medications that you take, stress, or comedogenic cosmetics. These are makeup products that can cause irritation. And oily skin is characterized by enlarged, clearly visible pores that have a glossy sheen or shine. It's thicker, it's pale, blood vessels may not be as visible. Then you've got combination skin. Combination skin is a combination of both dry and oily. And this has what's referred to in relation to your face, a T-zone. And the T-zone is characterized by an oily forehead, chin, nose, enlarged pores, normal to dry cheeks. When we look at the general assessment for skin lesions, as you do with your physical assessment, when you do your inspection, your palpation, you note the following features. The size of the lesion, the type of lesion, the shape and symmetry of the lesion, the color and pigmentation. You look at the surface area. How much area does it cover? And you look at the distribution over the body surface. What are some of the types of skin lesions, broadly speaking? Well, common skin lesions are broadly categorized as primary, secondary, and special. Primary lesions, they have basic reaction patterns of skin with a def definite morphology. The morphology is what you look like. Secondary, you develop during an evolutionary process of skin disease. So they occur because of diseases. 
and they're created by scratching or infections. Special lesions are related to certain diseases. So if we look at terminology related to primary lesions, which can include macules, nodules, pustules, plaque, vesiculas or vesicles, bullae or bulla, papules, then you've got lesions that are secondary, which could be considered to be scale, very dry skin, scars, which could be atrophic, crusting or oozing, fissures, which can be eroding, or ulcers. So let's review some of the primary lesions from a terminology point of view, so that you understand what they are. A macule is just a flat, circumcised or circular lesion. It's typically so flat that it's not palpable. The discoloration can be variable. It can be brown, blue, red, hypopigmented, hyperpigmented, but typically the size is pretty small, from about 0.5 to about one centimeter. So you can look at the images there I mean, kids that I grew up with in Australia, a lot of them had freckles. Some of the Asian babies that are born may have a Mongolian spot as a birthmark, which typically fades after a period of time. You can have tinea, vesicular color, which is hyperpigmented. Or you can have liver spots, which are also referred to as cafe or late spots which again, sometimes referred to as birthmarks. Then you've got patches. Patches are a larger macule, and typically they're greater than one centimeter. A teligo is one of them, or a cloasma, or a melasma, which is typically referred to as a mask of pregnancy, because during pregnancy, hormonal changes may change the um, pigmentation of your skin. Typically, it does fade after the pregnancy is over and the child has been delivered, but it typically takes some time. Then you've got a papule. A papule is a small, solid lesion and it's palpable. They come in various colors, but typically they are pink, or flesh shaped. Size is typically about 0.5 centimeters in diameter. They can be larger depending on what's caused them. So examples that you can see are skin tags, which some of you may have or your parents may have. It can be as a result of an insect bite or it can be as a result of inflammation of follicles in your skin folliculitis. Then you've got plaque. Plaque is indurated or deep and it's a thickened area of skin. It can be raised or it can be depressed from the surface of the skin. Size is typically larger than 0.5 centimeters in diameter. And this could be related to certain conditions such as psoriasis or tinea corporosis. Then you have a nodule, a node. And a nodule is a firm skin lesion that's raised above the surface of the surrounding skin. It can be warm, soft, fluctuant, movable, fixed, or painful. The surface can be smooth, or it can be rough, keratotic. It can be ulcerated, or it can be fungating, producing fluid. Depends on what's caused it. 
Size typically varies from 0.5 to about 5 centimetres. And examples that you're looking at here are a hemangioma, sometimes referred to as a strawberry birthmark. Neurofibromatosis, which is a terrible disease. Very disfiguring image problems or basal cell carcinoma. Then you have a vesicle. A vesicle is just a small fluid filled lesion. The fluid is typically visible because the lesions are often translucent. You can see through them. You can see that there's fluid in there. They're typically raised above the plane of the normal level of the surrounding skin. And their size is typically less than 0.5 centimetres in diameter. I mean, I say typically, because again, normally, not sure normally is such a good word, because again, everything can be variable. And the two examples that you're looking at could be varicella, also referred to as chickenpox which is infective, communicable. And you've got herpes zoster or shingles, which is painful. Then you have bulla or bullae. And a bulla or a bullae are or is a large vesicle or vesicles and they're filled with fluid. And they're raised and they're often translucent and their size typically is greater than 0.5 centimetres in diameter. Sometimes people refer to them as blisters. And you can have numerous consequences related to disease processes. Look, have a look at the fixed drug reaction there. That's an eruption. I looked after a patient in Saudi Arabia who had a reaction. She was an epileptic, status epilepticus and she was being treated with dilantin, phenytoin hydrochloride. And as the first dose that she had, she had a fixed drug reaction. And look at the blisters or the bullet on that diagram in front of you. She had them all over her body. It looked like she had second degree burns as a consequence. Then you have pustules which I'm sure many of you have experienced. And a pustule is just a lesion containing purulent fluid, material, or if you want to call it, pus. And it's formed due to a collection of inflammatory exudate rich in leukocytes. Well, pus is, they're white blood cells. They come to the site, they try and kill whatever is there, and as a consequence of that, they die. And as they die, they accumulate. That's your pus. And these may contain bacteria and be infective, or they could be sterile. Examples, common ones, could include acne. That's a severe case of acne. Hmm, gosh. Infected folliculitis. Infected scaby lesions. Or it could be pustular psoriasis. pustules. And remember, these are just a few. But this is just a general overview of what these lesions are. Then you've got an abscess. An abscess, sometimes referred to as a boil, not sure why, but I could use my imagination. They're hot. They're extremely painful unless they're evacuated. So an abscess is a localized collection of pus deep in the dermis or the subcutaneous tissue. And it's painful because it causes pressure on nerves. In the face, the face has got a lot of nerves, very sensitive area. An abscess is due to a deep-seated location of pus that might not be visible on the skin surface. 
but it would show signs of skin inflammation or redness. Then you've got a wheel. Not a car wheel or a bike wheel or a motorbike wheel. This is now a transient swelling of the skin and typically, depending on what's caused it, will disappear within a 24 hour period. And it's formed due to a sudden extravasion of fluid into the dermis. It could be, look, an acute reaction in relation to an allergy, which is demonstrated there as acute urticaria as a result of hives. Or even here, if you hit somebody and the hit causes a reaction on the skin, which causes the skin to, to swell. And you can see the finger marks. You can see the finger marks on the skin, but typically this will disappear within a 24 hour period. That is a wheel. Then you've got a cyst. A cyst can be big, small, huge. And this is a spherical or an oval sac or an encapsulated cavity, which basically means it's a cavity that contains fluid or semi-solid material. And it's lined with the true epithelium. The images that you're seeing there, for example, here, oh, what's that, a finger, okay? That's a finger. So my evaluation of that finger could be that someone's been doing a lot of writing with a pen. And because they've been doing a lot of writing with the pen, the finger has become irritated and inflamed. And as a consequence of that, a little cyst is formed, a blister. Or, as you can see the nurse carrying, that's an ovarian cyst. The patient with, the patient with this cyst that was evacuated, I think the cyst weighed about 30 kilos. So can you imagine the abdomen on the patient before the cyst was removed? Cysts. Scale. Scale is essentially dead tissue. And typically it's excess dead epidermal cells that are produced by abnormal keratinization and shedding. They're like fish scales. And examples could be hyperkeratosis, psoriasis, Ithiasis vulgaris. And there are numerous. You can have scale just as a result of getting older. Dry skin. Then you've got crusting. Crusts are dried exudates of body fluids. So this can be related to blood, serous fluid or pus, and it could be red or yellow or brown, etc. Impetigo is an example of where you can get crust formation. An ulcer, which you will see in your career, regardless of where you work, whether you work in gerontology, intensive care, any chronic home areas, or anywhere where circulation could be compromised. An ulcer is a loss of epidermal or dermal tissue. And the type of scarring that occurs depends on the depth of the ulcer. I'm not going to look at the stages of pressure ulcer development. You'll be covering that surely in some other aspect of your course. Or have probably already covered it, I'm sure. So types of ulcers, for example, that you are going to be exposed to are pressure ulcers, sometimes referred to as bed sores, decubitus ulcers. More common terminology these days is pressure ulcers. And typically these form on dependent areas, such as the heel or the buttocks. The one that you see there on the neck is probably related to a central venous catheter that was inserted on a subclavian vein. However, 
because the nursing care wasn't that careful, ulcer was formulated by the device itself and the way it was secured. Then you've got venereal diseases like syphilis, which can cause a chancroid ulcer. You have fissures. And a fissure is basically a linear loss of continuity of the skin and due to excessive tension. Look, uh, as we get older, you know, the skin gets drier, there's loss of collagen, elasticity, and the skin can tear very, very easily. And if it's in conjunction with dry skin or poor skin care or certain diseases related to eczema, for example, this can cause dry skin, but basically a fissure is just cracked skin. And look, it can be pretty painful. Then you've got scar lesions. And a scar is just replacement of normal skin by fibrous tissue during the healing process where skin's been damaged. And typically you've got two types of scars. You've got atropic scars, which basically mean that they have a depression. Like you can see on the image in front of you, acne scars which result in pitting. Then you've got hypertrophic scars, which are typically related to keloid formation. And hypertrophic basically means extending beyond the original injury or defect. And the examples you, you can see there here, um, looks like um, someone's had a cesarean section, a Caesar, and as a consequence of that, because of her skin, type has developed a keloid star or other injuries on the above one has resulted in keloid formation as well. Vitrification basically means thickening. That's all it does. And this occurs with most forms of dermatitis. And this is just, as I said, thickening of the skin surface and as a result of prolonged rubbing of the skin in an area related to their dermatological problem, such as dermatitis or eczema. And as a consequence of repeated rubbing, the skin becomes thicker and it may become hyperpigmented in that area, as demonstrated in the image that you can see. I mean, dermatitis is not telling you exactly what it is. Dermatitis is just an inflammation of the skin, which can be the result of many different conditions. Then you've got a burrow. A burrow, it's a serpentine tunnel, which basically means it looks like a snake. And it's made by the scabies mite in the stratum corneum, which you learned about in your basic medical sciences from Prof Marina. And basically it's an open end of a tunnel and it's got a little papule, but there's a bug in there, a scabies mite, a parasite. Then you've got comedones and comedones I'm sure we've all experienced, especially if you've got oily skin, it's a tiny plug that's present at the opening of hair follicles and it's formed by keratin and sebum. There are two types of comedones which are open, referred to as blackheads, and closed, referred to as whiteheads. Then you have Millennium O. Melia. And typically we see this in kids because in utero, they're covered with certain substances which help them survive or their skin survive during their watery 
confinement in their mother's uterus, in the amniotic fluid. But it can happen with adults as well. And these are tiny superficial cysts within the epidermal lining. Milia are often seen on the face, around the periorbital region, both in infants, children and adults. Typically more infants and as you get older. They're very common in newborns as I said, but they can occur at any age. And they're essentially just little white bumps that appear across the nose, the chin and the cheeks. Then you've got telangiectasia. And these are just broken capillaries, really. But these are visible dilatations of the capillaries on the surface of the skin. And they blanch or become white on pressure. They're also known as spider veins or spider nevae. And some of you would probably have them, I'm sure. And some of you will probably get them as you get older. And some of them, if you abuse yourself with things like alcohol or certain medications, may develop them as well. They can be perfectly normal or they can be the consequence of some condition. Then you have Papura. And Papura, they can be big and they call Papura then, or they can be smaller and referred to as petechiae. And these can be benign, getting older I guess, fragile capillaries, bleeding and bruising into the superficial tissue, or they can be serious as a consequence of some disastrous bug or organism that results in septicemia, sepsis, shock. The purpura typically are extravasation of red blood cells from the superficial blood vessels on the skin and mucous membranes. And as I said, they can be serious or they can be benign. They can be malignant or they can be benign. They can be big or they can be small. They can be normal or they can be abnormal. And these are just examples. And most of what you're looking at occurs with old age. So typically here, they're benign. However, if you see this, this is probably malignant. I'm not talking about malignant cancer, I'm talking about serious, related to some condition that could be very serious and life-threatening. Okay, that's the end of this session. So let's just have a brief revision about which lesion term this could be. This is just an exercise for you. So what do you think? You've got hypopigmented areas, liver spots, birthmarks, freckles. What term is associated with these conditions? These are macules. You've got a tiligo, a cloasma, or a melasma, depending on the term that you use. What term is this associated with? This is a patch. Then you have strawberry marks, or nevae, or hemangiomas, basal cell carcinoma, neurofibromatomasosis. What term? A nodule. Then you have these two conditions, big and small. These are called cysts. Then you have 
these, whether they're skin tags, insect bites, or inflamed follicles, these are called papules. Then you have this dry area, which is typically around the mouth and the nose. But it can be in other parts of the body as well. This is called crusting. Then you have these conditions, which are associated with the term that we mentioned previously, which is called plaque. Plaque is just dry and rough, typically. Then you have, gosh, these guys, and they create a burrow. Then you've got blackheads and whiteheads, which a lot of you have had. But what's the technical term in relation to dermatology? These are comodomes. And finally, you have this pitting of the skin, which is typically associated with acne, and this is called a scar. In this case, it's an atropic acne scar. Thanks everybody. Check out any of the other Dr. Manny Learn Shops on YouTube if you thought this was of any benefit to you. Bye for now.